Good afternoon, it's just gone 12 o'clock, so it's uh, the weekly Q&A uh, with me, Councillor Vicky Slade, for BCP Council. Um, obviously this is the first week since we've had the schools going back, not, uh, and the shops opening. Right, I've just uh, noticed I've got some people watching, that's good, I know that I'm, I know that I'm live. Um, a couple of things just to start off with. This is uh, National Loneliness Week, so just to be aware that the um, Together We Can programme is still working and people who uh, who are needing a bit of personal support, there is facilities available through Together We Can through our friendship line. So please uh, don't be lonely on your own. There is the number still available for you to call seven days a week, which is 0300 123 7052. Um, and uh, we have people on hand to support you, still do your shopping for you, still collect your prescriptions. Clearly, um, as people um, still remain shielded and people potentially have um, illness coming forward, uh, we're all there to support you um, and act as a community. Right, let's see what we've got. So far, we have no questions. You're obviously waiting for me to talk. Where will weddings happen? Oh, Hannah, this is so frustrating. The government still have not made any decisions on weddings. To our knowledge, um, we are planning for a ceremony only weddings for just the two people involved plus their witnesses to potentially start um, from the 1st of July, but we have no more information than you do. Um, there certainly won't be any events as far as um, reception, receptions or um, larger weddings. That certainly won't be happening over the summer. But if you have a wedding that's just you and the person that you love and your witnesses, there is still the possibility that they will start in, in July. Um, as soon as we have any more information, we will let you know. Um, okay, Bournemouth Security Constant not keeping left, please, can someone train them? Good point, David. I will have a word. Um, the idea is that uh, going back to when we were at school, when keep left was the, the way we all did things, was let's try something simple. Let's If we all stay left on the pavement and everybody else stays left on the pavement, then it's less chance of having a conflict. This clearly applies to people who are walking, cycling, running. Um, but I will speak to the fact that uh, for some reason the security staff don't think it applies to them, but it does because the wall should apply to us all. Um, okay, when are the traffic lights going to be working on Magna Road? Sharon, I wasn't aware of the traffic light. Oh, you mean the ones for bear, uh, the new development? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I will see if I can find out. Probably best way to deal with that sort of thing. Um, is to ask your local ward councillors. I have noticed that Councillor Richard Burton is uh, logged on here. I saw he was one of the first people. So Richard, can I ask you if you can go back to Sharon? Um, the, the best way to deal with these localised issues is to email your ward councillor. Um, everybody's email address uh, can be found on the uh, council website. We should also have some sort of telephone contact. I've had to take my home telephone details off because of some abuse I was getting last week that my children were also suffering. Um, so please do remember when you're calling somebody's number, uh, chances are that is their home. They are working uh, you know, remotely. Um, please be mindful of the fact that if you're calling late at night or early in the morning that um, the, these are, people have got a life. So best thing to do, drop them an email with your concern and they will pick it up. Far better than trying to deal with it through Facebook or Twitter. We can't really engage in a meaningful conversation. Uh, so best thing to do, email us on our official email addresses and we then have an audit trail of what we're doing. Um, some outlets aren't using protective screens and gloves, is this correct? So Nikki, the, um, the advice that's been given to all businesses is, is they have to follow certain procedures. They will all have had the, the, the relevant advice to them. Uh, the, the, the advice will vary from place to place. Um, I think that the, the truth is if you're not comfortable with the, um, with the measures that a business is taking, then um, you, know, you, you can challenge that with the business. Um, if they're breaking the legislation, then trading standards can get involved. But I don't think we should assume uh, that, the, um, that the requirements are as high as, as some people might think. Um, you know, if, if, if they don't feel it's appropriate to them, they don't, they don't have to, to do it. So um, check, check what the legislation says about that individual business. Ask the manager of the business um, what rules they've got in place. That's probably the most sensible thing to do. Um, you, we, we live in a, in, a, in a world where people can make their choices and their own decisions. 
Uh, Dan, when will the playgrounds be open? At the moment, the government have given no information about playgrounds and until we get that advice, the playgrounds will remain closed. So Peanut is asking about masks on buses. Um, so as of Monday, um, everybody who is over the age of 11 and not subject to a medical exemption is supposed to be wearing a face covering, not a mask, a face covering. Um, it can be a homemade face covering. It does not need to be a medical mask. So if you don't have something with you and you're able to adapt something, a scarf or whatever, that's absolutely acceptable. There is quite a long list of exemptions. Uh, people who have respiratory conditions, people who have um, communication issues, people who have heart problems, um, any, anybody under the age of 11. Uh, there's a whole list you can check on the Department for Transport website on who is exempt from wearing a face mask. The bus drivers will know. Uh, we are trying to encourage people to carry some sort of card that confirms that they have an exemption, just so that it's easier and there doesn't need to be a debate. Um, but it is down to the bus companies uh, and the train companies and the ferry companies to enforce it. Uh, it's not a council matter. Um, if you're not content with the way the transport company are dealing with it, I suggest you go to the transport company and actually say that you, you don't think it's being managed properly. Um, the bus companies have, have taken a massive hit. Uh, they've had to invest a lot of money on other measures like screens for the drivers. The drivers incidentally don't need to wear face masks. They've got a screen. If they're wearing a face mask and they're also wearing glasses, that could be quite dangerous. Um, so, you know, be mindful that might be a very good reason for them not to be wearing a mask. They've uh, closed some of the seating. They've removed some of the benches. They're, they're having to hygienically clean the buses a lot more often. So, you know, everybody is, is struggling to, to find a way through this. Sean's asking when the tea room is open to let the staff back in the cafe. No sit-down facilities are currently allowed anywhere until the earliest 4th of, um, 4th of July. The government had set the 4th of July as the date on which they would expect the next phase of lockdown to be lifted. At the moment, that date is still in place. We don't know whether that date will actually um, come to pass or whether that will be moved again. But certainly no cafes, bars, restaurants should be offering sit-down facilities before that date. Once we get to that date, if what we're expecting to, to happen uh, happens, um, then cafes like the Upton Country Park Tea Rooms, which I um, visited their lovely um, little kiosk in the gardens um, on some Saturday when, when I went for a walk, that will open. Um, again, those tea rooms and the other cafes need to be sure that they are able to comply with the rules they've been given and that they have staff who can safely work. So you know, that, that will obviously vary from place to place. Now we have a merge account. Any plans to join up cycle lanes? Um, oh gosh, Matt, we are so desperate to get this linked up uh, cycle lane that goes along the, the side of the, um, of the A338. Uh, we have a, a significant amount of money that's come through the Transforming Cities Fund, something like £80 million when you add in the money we're putting in and our partners are putting in. It's over £100 million to spend on sustainable transport. Um, the government were quite prescriptive around which of the schemes we are able to spend the money on. I'm not sure if that one is there, but it is something we're actively trying to put something along the side um, from the, the A338 um, up towards Blackwater. So we're all really keen to do that. It may be that that comes as part of the development around Wessex Field, um, because if jobs are being provided there and homes are being provided there, we need to make sure that it's all linked up. So watch this space. It is on our agenda, um, but these things take an awful long time um, to, uh, to come through. Lauren says she hasn't got any sound. I hope that's not me. Everybody else seems to be hearing me okay. So uh, Lauren, I uh, don't know if you might need to press FNF4 if you're on a laptop. Apparently, you can uh, get yourself in the right pickle with that. Um, okay, Richard has replied to Sharon that once the road is resurfaced, then the traffic lights will go back on. My granddaughter's entitled to free school meals. Her school is providing her with food packs. Half the time, his bread is mouldy. Or she said, oh, God, Jeanette, I have a horrible feeling I know which school you're talking about. I've had some real problems with one of the schools who have been providing really below par provisions. Could you email me um, or, or my colleague Sandra Moore? Because um, if it is the school, I think it is. Um, we need to deal with this because it's, it's been going on for a while. Most schools are providing um, the uh, free school meals vouchers for those children who aren't uh, attending school. 
Um, those children who are at school and receiving infant free school meals, um, uh, my husband works in a school, I know that they're providing around 100 meals a day to the children who are in school, which is quite different. But for children who are, um, who are uh, at home, uh, most of the schools are providing the vouchers. The summer scheme that was announced yesterday following the fantastic involvement of Marcus Rashford, um, not a big football fan, but I'm really proud of what he's done, uh, is a voucher scheme so that people will receive that, that, uh, that £15 a week. I don't know whether for those schools that are providing um, packs, whether that they will continue with that. You need to check with your school, but please do get in touch because um, there have been one school that I've been very worried about. Andre wants us to clean the prom. I'm not sure what you mean by cleaning the prom. Um, I think we've got enough issues down there at the moment. Uh, if you're talking about litter squads, the litter squads are very, very much um, working hard from first light, three o'clock in the morning, to clean the beaches, and our teams are out cleaning as much as we possibly can. Amy, I've answered the question about bus drivers not wearing masks. Um, it's to do with the fact that uh, it, it can be quite difficult to, to work in a mask over many hours. Uh, and if you're wearing glasses, the last thing we need is steamed up glasses. If they've got a screen between them and the passengers, there's no reason why they should wear a mask because they're not sharing the space. Can some new road layout signs go up in Wallace Down Roundabout? Uh, David, I'll mention that because there's some in my ward which are still up, uh, even though the new road layout has been there for eight months. And I did suggest that we should perhaps um, get them moved. So leave that with me. Um, okay, in light of the hoo-ha around statues, don't talk to me about statues. Yes, we can cure this with creativity, James. We've got some great ideas. Um, we have a cultural working party that's starting to look at some of our wider culture. Now that we're one council, we're able to look a lot broader. Um, so there's a piece of work being done about looking at um, our history, some amazing people in our past that most of us know nothing about. There's a chap from Southbourne, I think it is, um, who was uh, involved in slavery, he was part of the abolitionist movement, um, somebody's bound to, to fill me in, but somebody said there's a book that was written 28 years a slave, something like that. I think it was written off the back of the 12 years a slave, um, just to show some other amazing stories of local people. So we're doing a lot of work on that. Um, we're also talking to the scouts and trying to set up um, some conversations with them about uh, having a, a closer link with them going forward. Uh, is cycling in groups allowed yet? So, technically, you, the, these groups, anyone more, you're not allowed to be with more than six people. That The rules haven't yet changed. So I suppose if you were cycling in a group of less than six uh, and you were maintaining social distancing of two metres, then whether you cycle, walk or, or do anything else is, is legitimate. But remember, you can only be outside and with up to six people from other households and you must maintain social distancing. Um, okay, find your local councillor. What is the place regarding touching of traffic lights? Um, of course it could potentially spread the virus, but I don't think we can change all of our traffic lights to remove the touch pads. Um, I think it's about sensible precautions. I'll sometimes touch things with my elbow or through my sleeve. Um, I think we have to be reasonable on that. Okay, ah, uh, oh, right, okay. 11 plus, thank you for asking. I do have an update. The 11 plus is now open for applications. Uh, the schools are the schools that have locations that have grammar schools are waiting for some advice from government. But at the moment, the expectation is that 11 plus exams and other entrance exams will happen at the normal time. The applications are being taken now for the tests in September. The dates have been set. Uh, there is an assumption that provision will be made for those tests to go ahead in the normal way. In terms of people who are uh, wanting to uh, visit schools that their children might be starting in September 2021, and that includes me, I've got a child due to go up to upper school, uh, scary thought that that is, um, we should be going out now and visiting those schools. Quite a lot of the, the schools are um, making provision for virtual tours and some of the schools are making their own provision for one-to-one -one tours. Um, it is down to the individual school to make those arrangements, so you need to go on the school website that you're interested in um, and speak to them about what arrangements they're making. In terms of the question I had about um, the deadlines for applications, and no, you haven't missed it, thank you, your, your query's just literally come up. Um, 
the situation is that the date of um, is it the 15th the, there's a date in October which is for secondary schools and a date in January which is for primary schools um, those dates are set by the Department of Education they are not local they are national so we can't change those um, if the Department of Education makes any um, amendment to that then obviously we'll let you know but we don't hear anything in advance the, the information goes out five o'clock from the government and it's usually the first time we actually um, hear about it. Uh, weekly stats on my live chat. Do you know what, Nadia? Last week, 17,000 people saw this. Uh, we're ranging on a bad week, about 6,000 people. And I think last week was the highest, 17,000 people um, who see it. Of course, you can watch this back later. We're getting up to uh, anything between um, 300 and 1,200 individual comments. Um, on this every week um, and uh, anything up to a couple of thousand people watching live but 17,000 people had watched it when I checked yesterday um, I do know of people who go home and do it in the evening um, and catch up on the whole thing so that if they've come in halfway through they don't miss anything so uh, someone's asked about a drive through cinema Claire, thank you Claire Claire you log in every week and I always uh, watch your, your comments so it's good to have you with us um, I have been speaking about the possibility of a drive-in cinema. We are looking at options, but at the moment, um, there are no events allowed on council land. So we are looking at whether there are providers that might be able to do it on private land. Um, we know some other councils who are doing it, and I've put the council in touch with Eastbourne, who are doing a, um, a, a drive-through thing there. How many people are being tested daily in BCP for COVID? Is there capacity to test people without symptoms? We don't control the testing it's done. Uh, independently via the NHS and um, it is a private company that runs the site I know that we are way below capacity um, my understanding is that we're currently using about 25% of the capacity we have at the site um, anybody that needs a test is pretty much able to get a test um, but uh, the, the rules around who's entitled to a test are not controlled by us um, you can phone I think it's 119 um, or you can go online there are various options available uh, we know life is challenging with a lot of people furloughed and tight. Minimum policing and no Christchurch police station, thieves, paradise, boats are being broken into. Um, you need to report this to the police. Um, we are not the police. You, you know, every week I get asked, why don't the police do this? That's a question for them. Um, if there are crimes being committed, you need to report them. More often than not, people don't report a crime because they feel that um, it, no one's going to do anything about it. Well, if you don't report it, then no one's going to know it's happened. So you really have got to keep reporting. Um, it's really not something that we can control. Uh, go to the police, either use 101. I know that can take an awful long time. So my, my route is always to go to the Dorset Police website, report online. You fill out all the details. You can upload photographs. You can give all the details you want without the frustration of feeling that has somebody written down what I've said. Um, you also have the option uh, through that to ask for a victim support call. My elderly father talking on the beach, he was whisked from being, well, whisker from being struck. We've all got to work together. I, I, I don't think we can need to keep going over this. People are often a whisker for being struck. Um, near misses happen. Uh, we've all got to respect each other. The prom is a shared space. Um, we, we have issues every year. We always have done. Um, and we're going to see more bikes. Um, bike cyclists need to be cycling in, in moving to single file, although I did have quite a heated conversation with a family in uh, Creekmore on the Castleman Trailway at the weekend, where uh, 15 of them, 15 people, were spread across the whole of the trailway. And a mother and two daughters came along. I heard them ring their bells, and they got screamed abuse at by this massive family. Who's your bloody bell? I actually spoke out. I heard your bells. I heard your bells. And this family gave me grief. And I said, there's 15 of you and you are spread across. You need to move over as well. So I think we've got to stop having a go at cyclists. There are plenty of really rude walkers as well. So let's all stop being rude to each other. Let's all try and respect each other's space. Um, yes, you do get near misses sometimes. Yes, we need to slow our cyclists down. But the cyclists do have a right to be there. Um, until the end of June and then after that they have a right to be there in the mornings and in the evenings there is a shared space. As we're in, re getting more staff on board we're able to approach people about bad behaviours whether that's people taking their dogs on beach 
beaches that are not allowed and these are mainly local people so if you're going on the beach with a dog there are specific areas you can check on our website when you arrive at the beach you get a sign that says which way is the dog beach which way is not the dog beach that's down to you if you take your dog on a dog beach expect people like us to have a word with you because it's not right um, the same with barbecues they are not allowed on the beach at all before six o'clock after six o'clock they're allowed in specific locations details on the website please try not to use disposable barbecues use you know use something which you can take away with you so you're not impinging on anybody else when are the toilets going to be open most of the toilets are open Kirsty. most of them have been open for weeks if you look on the website you have a full list there are four sets of beachfront toilets which i understand will not be reopened uh, I don't have the list to hand. Um, Branks and Dean Child is one of them. Gordon the Zigzag is another one. I can't remember what the other two are. But the reason they can't reopen is because they're so small that they would not be safe for social distancing or they're in a location that would breach being able to use a beach hut or have emergency access. Within the next two weeks, all of the other to toilets along the beachfront will have been opened. Um, they are increasing them week by week. We also will have had more staff uh, who are able to get them cleaned and then as we've got those staff coming in we can extend into the evening. We have had some issues with not being able to keep the disabled toilets that you'd normally open with a radar key open in the evening and that's because of abuse that we've had uh, with people abusing the radar key, doing vandalism, so they're double locked in the evening to protect um, to protect you know, the, the sites from, from vandalism and they're not being able to be used by people during the day. Why the bin men throw the food waste bins instead of putting them back by the gates? Uh, Barbara, that I've done a bit, I have worked for eight hours as a bin person. My God, it's one of the most difficult jobs I've ever done. Um, I'm sure that most of them do their best not to throw them, but they are running behind that lorry right now. Um, and uh, you know, they, they do their best to respect your property. Um, but sometimes uh, they are under massive pressure to get moving. But I will pass the feedback back. Um, blah, 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 blah. Right, our BCP council sessions broadcast live. Joshua, yes they are. Last week, the full council meeting had 850 people watching live on YouTube from all around the country. It was quite spectacular. Uh, we had our overview and scrutiny board meeting that was published, uh, broadcast live on Monday. All of our public meetings that you would normally be able to attend are broadcast live on YouTube. If you go to our website, go to the democracy pages and meetings, you can log in direct from there and you can watch any of them. Bring the popcorn, some of them are really interesting. Some of them you might want to actually um, you know, do if you're, if you're struggling to sleep. Uh, libraries, Judy. Libraries are not due to open yet. They're in the third wave, so the earliest they could open would be the 4th of, of July. However, I suspect most of them will not open on the 4th of July uh, for a range of reasons. They may open in some locations, some of our key areas may open, some of the smaller ones probably won't, partly to do with the staffing, the physical building, the fact that you can't social distance inside. Um, some of them will open so that we can provide limited facilities. It's highly unlikely the normal facility will, will be um, back for a good time yet. Can we do a big clap support for our Premier AFC Bournemouth's first match? Oh gosh, I hope they stay up, don't you? Um, house swaps, they're already happening. Uh, so, um, Dorset Home Twist reopened three weeks ago. Um, the usual process, you, you apply as you normally do. So please get onto Dorset Home Choice. We know people are already moving. My wife and daughter were tested last week. They only saw the other... Yeah, it's vastly underused. Adam, again, it's not, not, our, not our concern. Okay. Um, right, I'm trying to find something that's relevant here. Constantly reporting theft from allotments. Uh, if it, Luke, if you've got a problem with your allotment, write in to the council and ask for more fencing. Um, but be aware that we have a £32 million hole in our budget this year. So the reality of getting more fencing for your allotments without an, a, an associated increase in the cost of allotments is unlikely. Um, yeah, the bin men are doing a brilliant job. They are fantastic. OK, I'm sat on the beach. Cyclists are flying along. The, the rangers need more powers. They do a good job. They do an amazing job. Our rangers are under massive pressure. They're having to deal with all the first aid issues that the RNLI would normally deal with. They're still at around 30, 35% of normal, normal rate. Um, what do we want them to do? Step mm -hmm. in front of a speeding cyclist? I think not. That would not be safe. 
um, they're doing what they can to intervene when they can even if they have more powers um, stepping in front of a cyclist is probably not bright uh, the truth is our bylaw requires us to have a police officer present to get the name and address of somebody who is breaching the bylaw the bylaw is only the summer ban between 10 and 6 the rest of it there is no bylaw and cyclists are allowed to be on there so uh, it's frustrating i know um but there are li very limited things that we can do let's be nice yes let's be nice a youngsters with a barbecue the other day not a throwaway barbecue a big one he phoned the police was told to phone the fire brigade he didn't because there wasn't a fire okay i'm trying to understand what the problem is if the barbecue was on the heathland it's not legal uh, if the barbecue was uh, on the beach after six, it's n on the right part of the beach, that's fine. Uh, if the barbecue was somewhere where barbecues are banned, then they're banned. Um, I I I'm not quite sure. I'd rather they had a proper barbecue than a throwaway barbecue because that's not leaving any waste. Um, but I I'm not quite sure what the query is. Uh, if it breaks a bylaw, the council can act. If it breaks a criminal law, then the police can act. If it's not breaking a law, then it's antisocial and not very nice, but there's not a lot we can do. Um, okay, positivity. Oh, I wish we could stop the hate. It's just horrid. Um, okay, uh, the dedicated cycle route between Bournemouth and Paul. So, Andrea, let's just go back to cycling very briefly because I've only got a few minutes left. I've already talked about the £80 million that we've got for our Transforming Cities Fund, which deals with some specific routes, including the main route from Ferndown to Poole, from Wimborne to Christchurch. It's about five or six cross routes. You can see on our website which ones they're going to be. And they're going to create some super highways for bikes. They're going to create better bus gates so buses get priority so we can start chopping out some of the delays. Temporarily, we've been given some additional money um, to do temporary cycle improvements. Um, Saturday, you will see the advert go out that Paul Key and the Paul Lower High Street will be closed from a week later uh, for the foreseeable so that we can enable people to socially distance better, to have a car-free experience. And that's an experimental traffic regulation order, which uh, if it's successful, we would like to see extended so that that becomes a, a much more people-friendly place. But um, various cycling routes between Bournemouth and Poole and Christchurch and Bournemouth and all the way in between, they're all underway. 600 suggestions were made to us. We have 15 of them that will be progressed in the next three weeks. We have to progress them in small chunks because if we don't progress the 15 that we've, we've, um, we've, we've published, um, then the government doesn't give us the next phase of the money. So rather than trying to do too much and then falling down and then losing the money, we're doing them in stages. So Bournemouth, Bournemouth, Bournemouth to Paul, I totally agree with you. I live in Paul. I have to get to Bournemouth. At the moment, I'd be a bit nervous about cycling in rush hour as well. The bins on the key are overfilling and spilling, overfilling. Uh, the, our team are doing as much as they can to empty those bins as often as they can. Um, they are emptied every day. Sometimes they're open to twice a day. Um, you know, without having more staff to empty the bins for a temporary period, it, it, these things are going to happen. Um, if a bin is full when you get to a bin, don't put your staff near that bin. Um, the respectful thing to do is to take your rubbish home with you. On rubbish, uh, we do have a new project that we launched yesterday with our schools. Um, there's a load more signage that's gone up, the keep left signage, the social distancing signage. There's um, Nelly the fish, uh, the recycling fish is coming down to the beach in the next few weeks to remind people to recycle their stuff. Um, there is lots more going on regarding messaging around littering that's being done professionally. Um, however, we launched a scheme yesterday with our schools to encourage children who are really, really upset with the behaviour of a lot of grown-ups in the world. Um, and we're asking our children to design us some posters um, that we will hopefully be able to get um, put into, into production ready for the summer holidays. So look out for it. Our team launched it last night. The press release was approved. So by the end of the week, we should have this little... Um, little project running and um, I think we've only given the children till I think it's the 3rd of July to get their artwork into us so we've got time to turn it into, um, into some decent artwork to be put um, around and about across Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul so do get, um, get your, uh, get your um, applications in. 
Uh, Bluebird renewal will not come through. Can I assume you won't get a fine? There was some advice from the Department for Transport, Sue, about um, extensions to those blue badge um, renewals. So I think you'll be fine, um, but it is worth following it up. How is the hiring process going? So um, there's a whole load of people who are being um, recruited um, and are in training this weekend due to go live next week and another batch the following week. So we're actually a week ahead of where we thought we would be in terms of recruiting additional staff. Um, the security staff that we recruited started work two weeks ago, uh, but we only had the money set aside to do a few weeks, so we're going to have to review that every couple of weeks. Um, okay. Any plans of reducing council tax bills? Uh, in a word, Imad? No. Okay, hairdressers are in phase three, um, so the earliest they could open would be the 4th of July. Uh, whether they do open or not is going to be down to what the rules are put in place by government, and we don't know what those are at the moment. Although, as you can see, I could probably do with a haircut myself. Um, the waste collection, yes, yes, yes. Lovely side of the cruise ships. I, we don't own the sea, unfortunately, that far out. If they were parked up close, you might get something, but no. But hopefully it's drawn people to come and have a look and maybe buy an ice cream or park their car and make a bit of money from the council that way. So, um, right. Do I believe we'll get the Air Festival in 2021? Paul, there is every intention to run the Air Festival in 2021. It is actually booked for the first weekend of September, deliberately so we can extend the season. Uh, we have made that booking. Uh, all of our um, contracts are being rolled over to that year. So there's no reason why it won't go ahead. Clearly, we can't predict the future any more than, than you can. Um, so, yeah, the, the intention is that it will be happening in 2021. Um, OK, uh, no, we're not planning to offer a rebate for beach hut owners. We have said that so many times, Gemma. Um, there are all sorts of things we've not been able to use during the lockdown, and uh, we have to move on with this now. We have a £32 million hole in our finances. We are working really hard to change our plans to re reduce and remove that. But if we don't actually fill that £32 million hole, we won't be having any services next year because the council will have gone bankrupt. That is our priority right now. We're lobbying the government for money to fill that hole. We're doing everything we can to support businesses so that they can restart. Because if businesses don't restart, people haven't got jobs. And that's our priority. Where people have been vulnerable, we've supported them. Where businesses are vulnerable, we've supported them. Uh, if you have financial reasons why you can't pay for your beach hut, then you can apply for a um, deferral of your payments. If you want to give your beach hut back because you've decided it's not for you anymore, that is your right. Um, we're waiving various conditions that we have on that, but we are not planning to give people a rebate for a number of weeks. Had it rained for six weeks, um, I'm sure people wouldn't have um, been, been too um, concerned about the beach huts not being available. So, no, uh, ultimately that's not our plan and it wasn't at the beginning. Okay, air festivals confirmed. Thank you for that, Tim. Are barbecues allowed the cliff top? No. Um, they're not supposed to be on the cliff top. Um, you know, keep your barbecues at home if you can um, and, and take them to the designated areas. We are looking at uh, whether there are a couple of parks that we could create dedicated barbecue areas, but they cost quite a lot of money because we'd need to provide the, bar the electric barbecues and all the facilities that go with it. Um, there are funds that we can apply to through what's called the community infrastructure levy. Uh, where local ward councillors can champion a scheme. And in fact, this week, um, we've approved £600,000 worth of projects in the pool area using money that was raised in pool over the last couple of years from developments. Everything from money towards um, a school that needs a swimming pool replacing to a community room in a library to zebra crossing in Creekmore. Gosh, I can't think. Um, Bourne Valley is some money in a project up there. Across the whole of, of, of Paul, um, that money is being spent. But there's a separate fund for, for Bournemouth. Um, so each ward councillor had some money which they could spend in their ward. They've got until October to get those projects in. Once we get past October, the money from the whole area is being put into one pot so that we aren't separating it into a Paul project or a Bournemouth project. Christchurch is slightly different because the money that they get gets transported straight to their town or parish councils so that those local projects can be run by the town or parish council. So if you've got a project in that area, talk to the town or parish. They have access to the money in the same way. Uh, do I have the numbers of people in hospitals with COVID? I don't know, Brown, but you can look on the Public Health England website for that information. It does change all of the time. 
Um, okay, it's gone half past, so I'm going to close this down, but I'm just trying to see if there's anything else critical. Uh, it's Father's Day on Sunday. Don't forget, of course, huge embarrassment if you forget. Um, so, you know, bear that in mind. I'm sure your father would like something delightful for the garden. We've just taken on an allotment, so uh, I think you can get a few guesses of what uh, father in my house is going to get. Um, so there we go. Uh, oh, a couple of things. Masks and gloves are not recyclable. Please do not put them in the recycling bin. Please put them in the black waste bin. And be aware that uh, it's school sports week. School sports week at home coming up. So I know my children are doing a sports day at home. Uh, your children might be doing it already. If they're not, go to the Youth Sports Trust website um, and there is a project there where you can register, get all the materials, run your sports day at home. Um, and your school is probably involved with it as well, so that's great. And the only other thing I wanted to say was, please, please, please stay local, shop local. We're asking people to support our local businesses. We're working with some great partners. Some of the, um, the Echo, Hot Radio, Wave are doing some free advertising for businesses to try and get the, the economy moving again. So, you know, please, if you, if you are safe to go out, please go out and use our local shops. They've had a really, really tough time. They're all spending a lot of money to put measures in place to give you a good experience when you're shopping. Stay left, stay socially distanced, shop local, Use a card if you can, um, and uh, and if you can get there by foot or on bike, even better. I'd rather that you came by bike and didn't pay um, to park in a car park if you can if you can get there in with um, on uh, two wheels or on your feet. Um, if not, then obviously our car parks are all open for you to be able to uh, to to park in them. So. I will see you all next week. Don't forget National Loneliness Week. Don't be lonely. You can always ring together. We can. And uh, until next week, take care.